Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you to today? Well, I'm taking you to early in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 15th of December, 1558, Cardinal Reginald Pole, Mary I's Archbishop of Canterbury, was buried at Canterbury Cathedral. Pole was 58 years old at the time of his death, having been born in March 1500. He was the third son of Sir Richard Pole and his wife Margaret, Countess of Salisbury. Pole's maternal grandfather was George, Duke of Clarence, who in turn was brother of Kings Edward IV and Richard III. And his maternal grandmother was Isabella Neville, daughter of Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, the Kingmaker, who had, of course, married George, Duke of Clarence. So windy out there, so sorry about the, uh, the, uh, the noises from out there. Pole refused to support King Henry VIII in his quest for an annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, his first wife, and Pole even wrote a treatise against it. Pole was made cardinal in 1536 and then papal legate in 1537. His strong and outspoken opposition to King Henry VIII and his policies ultimately led to the execution of Pole's brother, Lord Montague, and the imprisonment of his other br brother, Geoffrey, and certain other members of the family getting into trouble. And then later, the execution of his mother, Margaret Pole, Countess of Salisbury. The Cardinal himself was also attainted, but he was safely in exile on the continent. He returned to England in late 1554, following the accession of the Catholic Queen Mary I. And on the 30th of November 1554, Pole as legate officially welcomed England back into the Catholic fold. He was consecrated as Archbishop of Canterbury in 1556, and he was Mary I's chief advisor really during her reign. He became ill in September 1558 and succumbed to his illness on the 17th of November 1558, the very same day as his beloved Queen Mary I. Raphael Hollinshed's chronicles record his death. Leaving Queen Mary being dead and gone, you are to understand and note that the same evening, or as some have written the next day after the said Queen's death, Cardinal Pole, the Bishop of Rome's legate, departed out of this life, having been not long before made Archbishop of Canterbury. He died at his house over against Westminster, commonly called Lambeth, and was buried in Christ's <coughs> church and was buried in Christ's church at Canterbury. The chronicles go on to give a not so flattering account of Cardinal Pole's life, accusing him of barbarous behavior and blemishing the honor of his descent. Diarist and merchant Taylor Henry Machen records how Cardinal Pole's remains were taken on the 10th of December from Lambeth to Canterbury in preparation for his burial. The same morning, my Lord Cardinal was removed from Lambeth and carried toward Canterbury with great company in black. And he was carried in a chariot with bannerals wrought with fine gold and great banners of arms and four banners of saints in oil. In Ecclesiastical Memorials, John Stripe writes, Cardinal Pole died the same day that Queen Mary did and not many hours after her. His last will may be seen in Hollinshed's history. Therein, he desired his successor would not sue his executors for dilapidations, seeing he had bestowed more than a thousand pounds within these few years in repairing and making such houses as belonged to the sea since he came to it. The overseers of his will were Nicholas, Archbishop of York, Lord Chancellor, Thomas, Bishop of Ely, 
Edward Lord Hastings, Lord Chamberlain, Sir John Boxall, the Queen's Secretary, Sir Edward Cordell, Master of the Rolls, Henry Cole, Vicar General of the Spiritualities. Stripe goes on to describe how there was a secret report among papists abroad soon after that both Queen Mary and Cardinal Pole came to their ends by poison, but that Dr Haddon, a knowing man, put their deaths down to an infectious fever that the nation then laboured under, an outrageous burning fever which would be referring to the influenza epidemic that was going on at that time. Cardinal Reginald Pole's rather plain tomb can be found on the north side of the Corona or Becket's Crown in Canterbury Cathedral. Pole was the last prelate to be buried in the cathedral. So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history, the burial of Cardinal Reginald Pole at Canterbury Cathedral in 1558. Thank you for joining me. And I think we, well, I know we had a cameo from Madge the Cat. She's uh, just making her presence known. She thinks Teasel's getting far too much attention on these uh, videos. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. Uh, you can give me a like if you've enjoyed it and you can leave comments too. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.